For people who don't have Bologna and don't want to roll for her, I think the Adam's probably the best replacement. She's got 100% two turn death break on her S3 on only a three turn cooldown, which also gives weakness shared, making all your allies do 10% more damage to the boss, and her S2 is an AoE. There is the issue of a lot of people are already on Savior Adam and don't want to swap back. Even though Savior Adam's not too strong right now, I get not wanting to swap back and forth or having to stay on Verdant Adam for too long. Spoiler alert, once you hit RC21, you don't need Verdant Adam anymore. So if you do want to swap, you'd only have to do it until you hit RC21. For now, let's take a look at their stats. For Wukong, Rage or Destruction works really. Whichever one gives you better damage pretty much. You also do want a varying amount of bulk depending on your setup. And bulk is typically easier to find on Destruction since you don't really look for HP or defense when you roll Rage Gear. For speed, speed, speed main boots or attack main boots work, either one. I prefer speed main, though I've seen people use attack main and do just fine. For crit chance, Verdant Add-in gives 7% uh, crit chance to all allies, so you can go as low as 93. I'm also using a crit chance artifact on my uh, Bernard. And then for artifact, I'm using Arch Beautiful Seasons for the damage increase because we're using the healing device and not the uh, AoE damage up device, so we don't need any sustain artifacts. Oh yeah, TP sets. Crit Chance or Torrent, if you're using Idol's Chair on your support and it's pushing Wukong past them at the first turn, you could use Immunity Set to block the two Venoms as well. Mola's, I'm Mola's is S1 since he's our primary DPS, he does like about half of our damage I think. So this is useful to Mola though it is, isn't really mandatory if you don't want to. And then here, I don't know if the boss has 35 or 50% crit chance so I'm not sure if this is mandatory or not, but the extra pen resistance is nice anyways. Next up, Vivian. Vivian for her Molas. S3 is nice, because then her S, uh, she gives attack buff more often. And her S2 isn't mandatory. She does a good amount of damage, but Wukong's doing most of it. I had this Molas already for Banshee 13 one-shot, though. EE, 50% CR push after using S3, so she cycles more. Artifact. I like Call Ultra, because it's more consistent. Some people use Etika Scepter, but I don't like using that, because sometimes you won't proc at all. Sometimes you'll proc it too much. Just kind of annoying to deal with. There's also Max Limit Break Spirits Breath is pretty good, just a little bit hard to get. For sets, speed is ideal since you want to go pretty fast. Make sure you don't go too fast though, because the uh... Oh, your cleanser needs to go first. So, if your cleanser doesn't go first, she's gonna tank a bunch of extra injury for no reason. Second set can be crit or torrent, and then the rest of your stats go into attack and crit damage, and also, like earlier, for an add and give 7% crit chance. Now we've got our girl, Verdun add in. I just give her any sort of damaging artifact, really. For speed, it's, after you hit RC8, the speed doesn't really matter anymore. You can go a lot faster if you wanted to, but prior to RC8, we did want to be a bit slower. It doesn't actually affect your run that much whether or not you make her faster or slower. You could go speed or destruction set, either one would work fine, and then this could be crit or torrent. Uh, I have a crit boosting artifact on Bernard, so I can go down to 83. If you don't have that, then you want to be at at least 93% crit chance since adding gives the uh, 7 crit chance for free. Effectiveness, you need 105. The Bernard artifact also gives me 10% effectiveness, so I'm 1 effectiveness off, but I can't really fix that. And this is trivial, these are all free. For Bernard, all you really need is his S3 minus one turn cooldown. This and Vivian, they'll have immunity up pretty much the entire fight. You could mole his S1 for healing, or not mole, skill enhances S1 for healing, but it's pretty unnecessary. Then for gear, you just want to make him faster than Vivian, so he cleanses all the debuffs at the start of the fight. Immunity set is ideal, but it's not really a big deal if you don't have it. Artifact can be any stat boosting artifact, or you could use Idol's Cheer, or you could use some sort of healing artifact if you really need it. For devices, we're still going to be using the Warrior Healing Device to make up for our lack of sustain from no Bloodstone and our bad Bernard. The new device that we pick up is the Warrior Debuff Extension Device, so after Adam lands the first death break, Wukong can extend it and any severs until the end of the fight. Come back.
So we're pretty close to one-shotting now, just 8% left. With better gear, or about 2 or 3 more RC with my current gear, you'd be able to start one-shotting. It did rely on death break. Without death break, you'd get a consistent two-shot going at least. You'll also see that since we got the new warrior device, once Adam landed that first death break, it just stayed on the entire fight and it never wore off. So you've got an 85% chance to one-shot and a 15% chance to two-shot at RC8. So coming into RC15, we get a pretty big boost. When Wukong uses his S1, if he's in the front row, his damage dealt now increases proportional to the number of debuffs inflicted. This is 10% per debuff, so at max debuffs, it would be 100% extra damage. So at this point, the team has improved to a full one-shot thanks to our new device. I think that we still had a lot of damage to go because Wukong still hadn't taken his turn and his S1 does hella damage.
aside from that, this should be a not a 100% consistent one-shot, obviously, but since we had so much damage to go, there's a chance that even if Adam misses her first death break, if you have enough damage and she hits her second death break right after the boss uses S3, you'd still be able to one-shot. So I already spoiled it at the start, but at RC21, you don't even need Adam to one-shot anymore. You get this device, which makes it so that if there's no Soul Weaver in your team, you get permanent immunity for the whole fight. So long as you have that and this warrior healing device, pretty much all of the warrior devices, you can just go and remove every single person from the team except for Wukong and he'll just solo the entire fight. There are a couple things to keep in mind though. You do need a little bit of bulk since Wukong's just there permanently. He's going to take some injury damage and eventually he's going to hit 50% HP. So you want to make sure that a crushing hit from S1 or just the boss's S3 doesn't just randomly one-shot you. Also, you do need 100% crit chance since Adam's not giving you any crit chance anymore. I can't really be bothered to regear though, so I'm just gonna send it. So that was pretty easy. We did have 10 turns left, which means that you could one shot at RC21 with much less damage on your Wukong. You could swap him over to a PvP build at this point and use him in both PvE and PvP. One thing though is that you do get the 50% HP from injury at some point during the fight, so you'll need to make sure that you have enough HP to not just randomly die to something at some point. So Adin ends up working out very well as a Bologna replacement. She does slightly fall behind her, like both teams were two-shotting at RC2, but once we hit RC8, Bologna was already one-shotting with Deathbreak and Adin was just close to one-shotting. With better gear, you'd be able to one-shot obviously, but I was using pretty much the exact same gear on both of these units. And then at RC15, Bologna was getting 100% one-shot, while Adin still needed Deathbreak to one-shot. At RC21 though, it all stops mattering because Wukong just obliterates everything himself. This is also good because if you wanted to swap your Verdant Adin over back to Savior Adin, you're able to do it much earlier than people expected. <laughs> 